This session is dedicated today specifically to students who have deferred to answer questions, to talk a little bit about any concerns that you may have. I will go through a slide, jet, a slide deck talking very briefly um, about what the options are for students who have deferred, what to expect uh, once you are able to arrive here and to go through any barriers. But then really I want to open it up as a Q&A uh, for students to be able to ask questions to myself, to Marissa, um, and anything that you may have, any concerns you may have as you prepare for your time at Northeastern. So students may defer up to uh, two academic terms. This means that if you have been admitted to say fall, uh, we'll say spring 2024, and you deferred to the fall 2024, and then you deferred again to spring 2025, spring 2025 is your last opportunity to join us at Northeastern. If you do not enroll and join us at Northeastern in spring 2025, you will need to submit a new application to be considered for admission and to join us in a future term. This is specifically for master's related students. For a student who is a PhD, a deferral is not guaranteed, and that is because there are certain funding limitations that may be applicable to that specific term. The PI may need to start the research right away, and so they may actually replace you with another student if you don't join us in that term. And there are other factors to consider, um, many, many elements. The uh, PhD process is fairly complex. If you have any visa concerns, if you are a master's student who is unable to join us due to a visa concern, and you can demonstrate that, say, your appointment is scheduled for the spring 2025, and even though you'll be deferring a third term, if we have demonstrated uh, via the green form that is sent from the consulate or some other document where we can actually see a confirmation of the visa appointment, exceptions can be made to the two academic terms. You should email coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu where a member of the team can connect you with OGS and facilitate the visa support letters that have been designed to help you uh, join us here at Northeastern. Now, in some cases, you may have a visa appointment that is scheduled for January uh, for the fall, for, sorry, for spring 2025. And in that case, you can request a late arrival, which is generally up until two weeks after the program start date. After that, um, we are unable to accept students into the program because you have lost too much time in your academics and we feel that it won't be uh, academically successful for you to join us any later. There are also other circumstances uh, that are related to the late arrival date, such as the dissolution of your um, I-20 and, and your SAVIS record. And so once that is dissolved, uh, you're no longer able to enter into the United States. For students who are joining us in spring 2025, the late arrival date will be around January 20th, 2025. If you'd like to request a late arrival, if you do fall into the category where your visa appointment is um, upcoming but fairly close to the term start date, please log into your student portal. At the top of the page, you'll see a manage your applications tab um, where you can actually submit your request for a late arrival. This is also an excellent form if you have questions in general, um, such as you need to upload a foreign credential item that still remains, and you need to update any biographical information that is on your record to make sure that we have everything uh, aligned. If you need to request a deferral to a future term for your second academic request, all of this can be done on the inquiry form within your status on the application portal. After you submit your late arrival request, um, the e-form will be sent over to the Office of Global Services, and they do tend to export all of these letters in bulk, so you may not get it right away. But the truth is that you don't need a late arrival letter until after courses have already started. So please don't worry if you haven't received it and it's a week or two before classes start. 
Um, if for some reason something happens and you're able to come in time, then there's no need for a late arrival letter. But the Office of Global Services is meticulous in making sure that they have the late arrival letters to everyone uh, prior to their arrival date and after the term has started. Make sure that you notify your instructors of your late arrival and keep in touch with the admissions team and the academic department on your, on your status. You'll want to make sure that you are keeping up with your coursework, as once you arrive, students will have already attended up to six classes, and you may be quite far behind academically, even just two weeks out of the term. So we want to make sure that we're setting you up and helping you to succeed academically. And so be in touch with your department and your faculty for orientation information, course registration information, and anything else that you may need to do on the new student checklist. Now, for students who received a scholarship, a program launch scholarship, if the scholarship was specific to that term and fall 2024 was the last term that that scholarship was offered, your scholarship will not be carried over if you defer. So please be mindful of that and, and know that you are you will lose the scholarship if you defer outside of the scholarship offered term. And we offer the program launch and campus launch scholarships the first two terms that a program or a campus is open. Therefore, if you're entering in term three, you will lose your scholarship. All scholarships are 25% unless otherwise noted here on this chart. So for example, MS Information Systems in Miami for spring 25 will receive a 50% scholarship. Information Systems in Portland, Maine uh, for both spring 25 and fall 25 uh, will be 25,000 and 25% respectively. And Portland Bridge, the same. And all others here are 25%. If you are a student who is admitted to MSIS or MSIS Bridge in Boston, and you're interested in changing your campus and taking advantage of this scholarship, please email a member of our graduate admissions team and we'd be happy to update your campus location to say Miami or Portland um, in order to take advantage of the scholarship. There are complexities for students who are interested in pursuing their degree in Vancouver or Toronto, where it may not be feasible to transfer your admission record into our Canadian campuses. Rather, those are students who need to be directly admitted. Now, similarly, if you are pursuing information systems or information systems bridge at another global campus network, uh, one of our campuses in the global campus network, you may not be able to transfer. It depends on what campus you're studying at. So again, please just reach out to a member of our admissions team and we'd be happy to go through that with you. Lastly, we've recently launched Semiconductor Engineering and that scholarship, the 25% scholarship, will be applicable for students studying in fall 2025 and spring 2026. And these percent scholarships are applicable for the duration of your master's, so 25% until you graduate. Additional ways to fund your education. Most of our students fund their education through personal funds, family funds, or educational loans. Uh, some do receive external awards, and if you're eligible, you can apply for U.S. federal aid. Now, when it's time to join Northeastern, please make sure that you register for your courses. Some programs have an automatic registration where you have opted in and we will automatically register you for the courses. So um, very, very easy lift for our students, making it easier for them. Uh, if you need to defer to a future term, please make sure that you drop your classes. Uh, a, we will not defer you if you are course registered. And we will just assume that you've changed your mind and you're able to come. And B, you will be billed for those courses. Um, and we do not want you to be billed for eight credits if you're not pursuing eight credits. So regardless of whether you are automatically registered or whether you are um, opted in registered, uh, or, sorry, opted self-registration, uh, please do make sure that you have dropped your courses if you are deferring to a future term. Next, um, you will want to 
log into your student hub where you'll have an opportunity to uh, see all of your registration opportunities, browse the class list, look at the course catalog, really begin to map out your academic journey at the master's level. We have a wonderful team uh, within the student services who would be happy to help you with any questions that you have um, related to choosing your classes, dropping your classes, registering classes, etc. There are some common registration errors that are uh, listed here. The first is a field of study or programmatic restriction. So for example, if you are interested in taking a course that is outside of your intended major, then you will need to uh, work directly with the student services team to get a course override. Similarly, if you're interested in taking a course that's offered in, say, the Business School or Cory College of Computer Science, uh, then we have very specific instructions on how College of Engineering students can course register. We want to make sure that as part of your academic journey, you're able to take a multitude of courses that are both within the College of Engineering in your intended program, but also to add uh, breadth to your, your program. And so giving you the opportunity to take courses across the college, um, also across the university to immerse yourself with other students who may be like-minded, but may be thinking completely different. Um, being in a business class is quite an experience for an engineer because these are just students who are wired differently and it can be extremely exciting. It can open your mind and it can push you to be a better engineer. Um, another common registration error is the level restriction. So for example, a student is interested in registering for an undergrad course, you may not be able to do so because you're a master's student and there may be prerequisite or test score error restrictions. Um, which means that uh, there may be a prerequisite course that you need to take. Maybe you took it as part of your undergrad, but you need a course formal course override uh, to make sure that you can still take it here at Northeastern. Now you'll see the registration error when you log into your actual uh, course list and you go to submit. You will see it in red and it will actually say an error. And then when you click on this link on the bottom right hand side, uh, it will show you exactly what the error is. And so for any of these questions, reach out to a member of our student services team and they can make sure that they help you um, to either register for the course or find a close alternative if it's full or you're not able to register for logistical reasons. If you would like to submit the registration override request by contacting a member of the student services team, you can do so by completing the graduate form, which is on the student services website. And similarly, if you're looking to take a course outside of a college, um, this will all be done through the respective link here at the very bottom. And we will circulate a copy of this slide deck following today's session. Now, that is a very quick overview um, of what to expect as and going through some of the logistics as you prepare to come to Northeastern. Um, but we would love to hear from you any questions or concerns that you may have. I see a few questions uh, in the chat. How can Northeastern help to get the U.S. visa to join Northeastern on time? Northeastern does not work directly with the consulate. That is um, up to the student themselves. What we can do is provide you visa support letters. So email a member of our admissions team. They will connect you with the Office of Global Services. Um, but we do not help with the actual visa appointments that you must do yourself. Um, I had requested that my admission be deferred to fall 2025, but it was approved for January 2025. Should I go ahead and apply for the I-20? Um, so, yes, what we always do is if you were originally admitted to fall 2024 and you request for fall 2025, we've found that many students still join us in the spring or want to join us because they were either able to get a visa appointment or their medical uh, situation has cleared or for many, many reasons. 
And so we always defer students directly to spring. And then if you're not able to join us in spring, your request has been recorded and we'll defer you to fall, assuming that you're within two terms. Uh, may I get a, re a recording of this webinar? Yes, absolutely. We'll send both a recording of the webinar as well as some of the URL links uh, to help you to navigate. I would love to hear from you all um, what are some of the greatest questions that you have, um, any concerns, any thoughts as you, as you prepare uh, to join us for the next term. I've already obtained the F1 visa. Do I again apply for a new visa or the existing visa works? You'll have to check the expiration date on your visa. What you will need is a new I-20. So joining us in spring 2025, you'll need to request a new I-20 because I-20s are term and campus specific. That means that if you are deferring to um, a future term and possibly changing your campus, so if your information system's Boston, but you want to take advantage of that incredible scholarship that, that the Rue Institute in Portland or Miami offer, you'll need to submit both a campus change request and the I-20. Are there in-campus dorms available for students? Northeastern does not offer dorms for graduate students generally. Um, you will need to look at our off-campus housing website. Um, we do circulate information about finding um, finding campus uh, off-campus housing. And we will also host via our ambassadors WhatsApp groups that are um, specific to students. So you'll be invited both by your ambassador to join your program specific group, but you'll also be invited by your ambassador to join a housing group, an off-campus housing group. And those are again, campus specific and program specific. So we tried to keep all of the telecommunication network students for Boston uh, in the same group. Now, smaller programs may be in with other programs that we think uh, mesh well together so that you can find like-minded students where you may be taking similar courses um, and connect together on housing. What about the co-ops? How does it function? Great question. Um, there was a, a wonderful article that was released by President Dayun this morning that said, um, uh, knowledge is becoming, uh, basically that everyone is gaining knowledge, um, but experience remains a precious commodity. And I can't state that enough with the rise of artificial intelligence, with um, just general global access to the internet and all of the opportunities that um, have arisen over the last few years, it's generally easy to learn on the internet, right? But experience is a completely different, uh, something completely different. And for that, Northeastern has the oldest co-op program in the nation, and we remain number one in co-op opportunities. Students who are at the graduate level are able to pursue a co-op for four, six, or eight months. Um, and as part of that, uh, you gain real world experience. And so students, like it's a job, uh, you have to apply for it. You have to be selected. We have an incredible support group who are here uh, as our co-op faculty who will give you the introduction to co-op course, help you to write your resume, prepare your cover letter. They will help coach you for your interviews and help in the co-op job search process. And so um, you can take your introduction to co-op course in either your first or your second term and then pursue a co-op starting in your third term. Does the Telecommunication Networks program have any campus but Boston? Telecommunication Networks is uh, specific to the Boston campus. Uh, I, you said one cannot defer a second time. No, that is not what I said. Um, I said that students can defer up to two terms. So you can request a deferral to the next upcoming term and then the second term. So if you are admitted for fall 2024 and you weren't able to arrive, you can defer up to fall 2025. That means that even if you submit one request, you'll be deferred to spring 2025 and then to fall 2025. So you can defer up to two academic terms. 
Uh, if you are not able to join us within those two academic terms, you will need to reapply for admission. Um, my F1 visa was done for fall 2024 for five year period, but I've decided to join for fall 2025 should I request for a visa extension. This you need to be in touch with the consulate directly. Um, and, and the Office of Global Services, what I can advise you is that you do need an updated I-20 request. Is there an opportunity for engineering management students to change from Boston to Miami? No, engineering management is not offered in the Miami campus, but you're welcome to apply to information systems uh, in the Miami campus. Um, does the Office of Global Services help to secure an appointment date? Uh, I'm not able to secure it for the spring term. No, the Office of Global Services does not help to secure an appointment date. Uh, a student must work directly on the consulate website to secure the, the visa appointment date. Um, I don't know who my advisor is. Our team of student services, um, they allocate different advisors uh, based on a student's program and um, other criteria. So you should simply email um, via the, the website submitting a form and your advisor will contact you. We don't publish the advisors, um, rather you're connected with them directly. Is it necessary to pay the SAVIS fee again or is there a requirement? Um, if I already paid it for fall 2024. This will depend on retaining your SAVIS record. And so if your SAVIS record becomes dissolved, then you'll need to pay the SAVIS fee again. But if you retain your SAVIS record, um, then you will uh, not need to pay it. And that depends on where you are within the SAVIS pipeline. So depending on which stage you're in, uh, there's different criteria and when you need to retain your SAVIS record, in some cases, it is dissolved, and you do need to reapply for both the I-20 and the SAVIS, um, but it, again, depends on where you are within the pipeline. Uh, why are we not allowed to apply for on-campus jobs? Uh, you absolutely are allowed to apply for on-campus jobs as an international student. Um, you should visit the uh, on-campus employment website and look at the jobs and apply. Does this webinar apply to students admitted to the Toronto campus? Yes. So when I say I-20, um, it should also be noted that you can use this term interchangeably as a study permit if you're studying in Vancouver or Toronto. Uh, how does the visa support letter help the uh, process? A visa support letter is a document that is provided to the consulate uh, for any students who may have visas under administrative processing. So for example, we see many students who uh, may have a visa placed under administrative processing. Northeastern provides the visa support letter. You email it to the consulate. It's been drafted by our legal team in the Office of the General Counsel, and this then supports uh, facilitating your visa and issuing your visa. Uh, I have already requested for my I-20. Can I still request for a change of campus? Likely, yes. Um, just email the graduate admissions team today. Let them know that I sent them your way or I sent you their way and uh, they will help you navigate both the updated I-20 as well as the change of campus. How can I contact my academic advisor? And you can contact your academic advisor um, by emailing them via the student services website. Uh, let's see, I think Marissa is putting it in the chat. I think she may have already done so. Uh, so if you click on the new student info and orientation page and she put the uh, grad advising email address there too. Thank you, Marissa. So you can either send them an email directly or fill out a form on the website. Um, I am not ready to join for spring 25. Can I defer my admission to fall or I'm automatically considered? You need to request a deferral to fall 2025. And if you were admitted to spring 2024, your admission will not be updated to, uh, to fall 2025 because you now fall outside of the two-term uh, academic allowance. I was accepted for fall 24 and obtained a visa. 
Um, unfortunately, I deferred to spring 25 and I received my updated. Uh, so this question has been asked a few times now in today's session, and the answer remains the same. That is that uh, any visa extension questions need to be sent to the U.S. consulate directly. Um, Northeastern, especially the admissions team, is not able and qualified to answer those types of questions. Um, visas are very complicated. We are not going to interfere with the, the immigration process. And so you do need to be in touch directly with the consulate. The only thing I can say is that you need to apply for a new I-20 uh, for your updated term. Wonderful. And those are all of the questions that I've had come in so far. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions, I will give you a minute to put them in the chat now. Um, otherwise, I will send you on your way and let you know that if you have any questions, uh, you shouldn't hesitate to email a member of the graduate admissions team at coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu. Wonderful. Thank you, Marissa. And I just want to give a, a, a wonderful thank you to my colleague, Marissa, who has been putting all of the reference links into the chat. Um, if you have any questions, she has given you the grad advising webpage, the information to email a member of our admissions or advising team, the links to student employment, the student hub, the new student information page, information on scholarships, as well as the instructions to request a late arrival. Um, wonderful. Okay. And with that, I will say thank you to everyone for joining us today. Congratulations once again on your acceptance to Northeastern University, and we are so looking forward uh, to welcoming you to the university. We hope to hear from you soon and wish you a very bright future ahead. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Kelly.